Now I'm going to go through a few reports, which are one from McKinsey, one from Microsoft, and one from the European Union, and what their and give their implications in the area of um, health informatics. So uh, this, these McKinsey has two reports. One is the summary of the other, and they're remarkable for having a very complicated long URL, which I give here. Um, and this came out uh, April 2013, so it's a relatively recent for, this, for the purpose of this lecture report. And it had uh, several important conclusions, which we'll now go through. Um, so these are a sort of list of the um, various changes that are making big data and health informatics critically important. Um, there is the actual demand for better data, which is coming due to the cost pressure and the fact that people who use better data are getting better results. And um, so the people not using big data are worried. There is a lot of more, and there is the supply issue. There is a lot more relevant data. Uh, EMRs, as electronic medical records, are becoming more pervasive, and that allows data to be shared and used much more easily. And of course, so you can link that to not just health data, but uh, social networking and other types of data on people. And then we have here the technology. And the technology is allowing you to um, do, well, we're doing X-Informatics in the clouds. We can run our data analytics, we can use Hadoop, we can process all this stuff. And we're not worried about the large amounts of data. And then we have um, the government um, actually trying to producing market change through various uh, new, new laws and new initiatives. And certainly the government is pressing the key interoperable standards which are allowing data to be exchanged. There's no point in gathering a lot of big data unless there's some agreement on format so it can be exchanged. So this is a summary of the types of data. We have here activity uh, claims, I mean this is insurance data. And here we have the clinical data, the actual data from the hospitals and the doctors, the electronic medical records and all those images. We have pharmaceutical companies which have huge amounts of R&D data, screening data to showing you what what a particular chemical does on what particular bi um, bi biology sample. And then we have patient data. Um, patients will be tweeting about hospitals and telling about which hospital is good and what's not good. And also they'll have their own social networking data telling you about their lifestyle. So here we have these four major big data pools, uh, which have all exploded over the last few years. Some of these data um, have actually existed before, but, ten, but often not in electronic fashion, and certainly not accessible broadly. We'll never have, at least in the near term, med health data ac accessed um, very freely because of privacy issues. I showed you some examples with quantified self where there were no privacy issues, but most data is restricted by for privacy issues, but still, Doctors and researchers will have access to significantly more data than they used to, to make better decisions. So these are the so-called value pathways. What this data is actually going to um, enable, it enables you to live better. Uh, I live terribly, so I can certainly be um, inform my lifestyle that will promote my well-being. Um, <coughs> Then if I get ill, which uh, hopefully we won't, you can actually go look at the data on the various hospitals and what, who does what, and which, which approach is effective to actually get the right care. Um, and then given that care, we can say find out which provider is the optimal provider. So we need better care. We can find the right approach, we find the right place to do it. And then we can also uh, look and see whether it really is necessary to buy that special 
a proprietary drug or whether a generic is actually going to be sufficient. And that should be documentable through data, where people compare the response to the different types of available drugs. And then finally, we're all doing, this is all being advanced by the big data revolution. Uh, the pharmaceuticals and the government are all driving more and more innovation in this area, because this is the area where there's the greatest chance of, a, of improving, even for the government, the uh, well-being of the citizens, 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 and for the pharmaceuticals uh, for, to produce better products, which will not only help citizens, but also help the pharmaceuticals. So, here, this slide here suggests that several hundred billion dollars can be saved by uh, taking what's effectively known now and applying it. Here's the, and these are in these um, pathways, the right living pathways, 70 to 100 million um, dollar, billion dollars, did I say million? 70 to 100 billion dollars can be saved by targeting disease prevention and doing um, programs that are enabled by data. Then we have the identifying the right care, so we can actually document which approaches are the effective approaches. We needn't spend more money on things that are not actually necessary. And we can actually get that all coordinated across all providers. And then we can go to the right provider. We do not have to um, always go to emergency rooms. And uh, we don't necessarily have to go to the most expensive primary hospitals. We can customize the provider. Then we here have, we have the uh, right value where we gain can get the cost-effective drugs and not pay too much. There's a lot of uh, expenses in the medical profession at the moment by people being very conservative. That conservatism could possibly be relaxed if we have a more data-driven approach suggesting that a certain step is or is not necessary. And here's where we have possibly for a researcher like me, the most interesting area, accelerating discovery in the area of drugs and medical treatments through research and development and studying existing big data. Anyway, that tells you can see all of these areas has similar gain from 50 to 100, million, 100 billion dollars, and the total is 300 to 450 billion. So here we have um, this, uh, we're in, again these five pathways, the different ways we can uh, we can enable use big data, the right living, the right care, the right provider, the right value, and the right innovation, and how it's spread among the different uh, stakeholders. We have the the uh, poor old patient, the uh, medi the medical uh, institutions. The insurance companies and the uh, pharmaceuticals, and this sort of shows you where the innovations are spread, and that actually they're along almost every every, every area. Possibly you can see that uh, getting and uh, choosing the appropriate value has a lot of uh, the, that, and the choosing the appropriate care. So. These are sort of related, because this tells you the care, this tells you how it should be implemented technically, which is the right drug and the cost-effective drug. So these have the greatest gains, but there's a lot of gains from people uh, living in a healthy fashion. Uh, significant gains from choosing the right hospitals. And actually slightly disappointing, there are, and these, this, these are not dollar numbers, these are um, number of uh, examples which they've identified, there are somewhat fewer in the innovation area. Um, <clears throat> these tell you um, how these, these particular innovations, um, how they're divided. So there is, um, like here we have most prevalent is actually being proactive about managing health. And health education, just telling the patients what's going on. There's somewhat less about actually using the right drugs. Um, here we have choosing the right um, 
uh, approach to, to, to even making people healthy, live healthier or curing their diseases. And um, again, communicating with a physician. Personal activities are actually the most promising. Here we have the right provider. Well, the dominant here is uh, actually doing a financial, optimi optimizing dollars and location. And there is a significant amount just from looking at the uh, quality of the performance uh, of particular institutions. Here we have um, doing the drive value, and there's a small amount of fraud detection. But uh, most of it is enabling people to make informed decisions. And um, here we have innovation, and um, we can use big data to actually improve the uh, process for getting new drugs approved. So this tells you um, uh, how these, uh, these five uh, pathways, how they break up between um, public, re public um, data types and proprietary data types and what's called a acquired uh, data types, which are ones that you can effectively buy from somebody else. Um, which are you know, online resources, which are not public, but they are available. And um, these are um, the types of here we have the, the, these dark blue things are the venture capital funded businesses. And here we have the actual participants in, um, in the health data initiative, which um, and which are obviously are possibly the largest source. Although when you get to proprietary, then not surprisingly, the actual businesses start being the, the dominant um, uh, user of that particular type of information. So this tells you what you're meant to do. If you're an organization doing a big data transformation, and um, this um, this is not specially for um, for the um, this wasn't specially for this report, but is a broad a broader idea, and it tells you how you how you actually implement the big data transformation. Um, you need to know where you want to go. You need to decide um, what you have to do to get there. You have to design getting there. You have to travel to where you want to go. And you have to keep on going and not fall back. Because um, one of the problems in this world we live in today is everything's changing. And so it's very important that we not just do something and then sit back. Because there is new discoveries and new data every day. So this tells you the uh, little more detail on, on where the big data and the analytics um, come along. Um, so we have the reporting. These are existing um, uh, data, such as personal health records, and information that's already been ported, reported about the effectiveness of drugs. Here we have monitoring, these are all these devices strapped to you, telling you uh, how you're doing. Then we have um, sort of a, two types of data mining, one called evaluation and one called data mining. And um, this is looking at the basic correlations, and this is a more thoughtful analysis uh, to actually decide what the right answer is. So I'm not certain that everybody would do this particular division, because you always have, remember rightly, we do the data, information, knowledge, wisdom, decision pipeline. So this is just going through that pipeline. And um, we always have that in every case. And then we need to know what will happen. And given what we have, we have to adjust our insurance rates and make certain our hospitals are prepared. So. Big data will affect all sorts of things.